Hello, I'm Dr. Sue Tansky, Section Chief of Pediatrics here at Dartmouth Health Children's. I'm also a mom of three. I have two kids in college and my youngest is 11. We are all very excited that FDA and CDC have recently authorized the COVID-19 vaccines for emergency use in children as young as six months. In the U.S., there are 19 million kids who are six months to four years old who've not yet had access to this vaccine. This is truly a moment we've all been waiting for. We're very excited to start vaccinating the six month to four year olds and we plan to be offering appointments at Dartmouth Health Children's locations later this week. Supplies, however, will be very, very limited to start with due to the allocations to the states and their distribution to practices. There will be enough vaccines for everyone that wants them, but will, it will likely, likely take a few weeks to get everyone started. For those that are patients at Dartmouth Health Children's, if you have a Mighty H account, you will be able to schedule your child's vaccine and boosters directly from your account and simply select a date and time that works best for you. As of today, June 21st, these schedules are not yet open, but we do expect this in the next couple of days. You can check on Mighty H or watch for additional communication from DH. If you are not yet a patient of Dartmouth Health Children's or don't have Mighty H, our COVID hotline is ready to help, 603-650-1818. Our staff is available Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturdays 8 to noon. We've been waiting so long for the COVID vaccine for this age group because of the very careful approach that's been taken for our youngest children. We now have a very safe vaccine for COVID-19 that will help protect our littlest ones from severe infection. The vaccines from Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna for our youngest children show an equal amount of immune response against COVID as seen in our older kids, teens, and adults. COVID vaccines for children and young children are safe and effective. Nearly 55 million doses of Pfizer-BioNTech COVID vaccine have been given to our kids between the ages of five and 17, and nearly a billion mRNA vaccines have been given worldwide with remarkable safety. While we all know that the vaccine has not been able to prevent all COVID disease, many, many studies have shown that these vaccines have proven to be very effective to reduce the risk of severe illness, hospitalization, and death from COVID-19. Even though many of our kids have had COVID already, we know that reinfection with new strains is very common, and we know that each illness may hit a person differently. For example, we know that during the Omicron surge this winter, five times more children under the age of five were hospitalized for COVID than during the Delta wave. This vaccine will help our immune systems to prevent illness or more severe disease. The difference between vaccination and natural infection is the price paid for immunity. The price paid for immunity after natural infection could be pneumonia from chickenpox or pneumococcus, birth defects from rubella, liver cancer from hepatitis B virus, or death from measles. We know that COVID disease can lead to hospitalization, multi-inflammatory syndrome known as MISC-C, long COVID symptoms, and death. In the under five age group, 202 children have died from COVID since this pandemic started. Unlike natural infection, immunization does not have this high price for immunity. The dose for the vaccines for our littlest age group is quite small. It's three micrograms for Pfizer, or one-tenth of the adult dose, and 25 micrograms for Moderna, or one-quarter of their adult dose. The Pfizer series is three doses, two doses at least three weeks apart, and a third at least eight weeks after that, while the Moderna is two doses four weeks apart. I want to now focus on some questions that we've been hearing from our parents. So, my kid is healthy. Is the COVID-19 vaccine even necessary if my kid is healthy? We want to keep all kids healthy and specifically protect kids from COVID, just like we do with all of our childhood vaccines. Despite the fact that many children experience less severe illness from COVID-19, as I've mentioned, some children do suffer severe complications. Of those kids who've been hospitalized from COVID, only half had underlying medical conditions. The rest were healthy kids. Vaccines help prevent this hospitalization. Looking at the five and, five and over age group who were eligible for vaccination, hospitalization rates for COVID have been one and a half to two times higher amongst unvaccinated kids as compared to vaccinated kids. There's also growing evidence that some children suffer from symptoms such as respiratory disease, fatigue, stomach problems for weeks to months, sometimes called, as, called long COVID. And just like adults, children who have few or no symptoms can still transmit this virus to others. The surest way to protect children and our communities from the harmful effects of COVID is to get the vaccine. Next question, should my child get vaccinated if they've already had COVID? The answer to this is yes. There are no known risks to getting the vaccine after having had COVID. And in fact, studies have shown that people who've had COVID disease and vaccination have much better protection than with infection alone. 
Put another way, reinfection with COVID happens more often to those previously infected and not vaccinated compared to those that have been both infected and vaccinated. So how long should I wait to get vaccinated after my child has had COVID? Kids can get vaccinated as soon as they're fully recovered from their COVID infection and have no symptoms. We do know that reinfections with the newer variants can happen fairly quickly, even as soon as six weeks after the last infection. Previous recommendations from the CDC suggested waiting up to three months, but with these newer variants, there might be some changes in this recommendation moving forward. Talk with your provider, but getting vaccinated once your child is fully recovered is sounding like a good idea. What about booster doses for the older kids? Are these important? For many vaccines, including the COVID vaccine, the strength of protection decreases over time. With COVID, we've also had to deal with new variants that don't match our vaccine well enough. A booster shot helps the immune system build additional protection to address this waning immunity and this mismatch to the variants. So what about severe effects from the vaccine? What are the risks of getting myocarditis from this vaccine? Myocarditis, or inflammation of the heart muscle, is very, very rare. I'll emphasize the word rare here. According to data collected on kids ages 12 and older from December 2020 to August 2021, the group with the highest risk was 16 to 17 year old boys. And this was very rare, 106 cases per million doses of vaccine. For nearly all of these cases, recovery was within days and patients needed very little medical intervention, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen. This is unlike the myocarditis that happens with COVID infection or with MISC-C, which leads to hospitalization, often intensive care stays, and more severe damage to the heart muscle. The risk of vaccine-related myocarditis in younger children and girls is much lower, and in the vaccine trials for young kids, there were no cases identified. Can my child become infertile if I vaccinate them? There is no evidence that the vaccine will affect development or fertility. The theories that the COVID-19 vaccine might affect fertility have zero scientific basis. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, and the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine all continue to state that the COVID-19 vaccines do not affect fertility. And we have many patients that were conceived after their moms had gotten their COVID vaccines or while they were pregnant, and those kids are doing very, very well. So what are the side effects from this vaccine? Similar to the older kids, the most common side effects of the vaccine in small children are pain at the injection site, fussiness, fatigue, and fever. These are similar to other vaccines like the flu shot and very common when we vaccinate little kids. And not all kids even get side effects. And once again, it's important to know that the benefits of getting vaccinated outweigh the risks of the vaccine or of getting COVID. Please be sure to visit us at dartmouth-health.org for the latest COVID-19 information. Thank you so much.